Okay, um, now this afternoon we're going to talk about the old-fashioned willow lobster pots and how the families used to make them through the centuries. Um, the willows were grown locally and um, most uh, inshore fishermen had a big allotment and usually um, they had a few willow bushes at the bottom of their allotment and used to cut their own willows. My family had a willow bed years ago um, but now we get the willows from the Somerset levels. They're um, a good quality willow and um, they seem to be more pliable. I think they get more wet weather there and they grow at a consistent rate rather than ours around this area where you probably get a dry spell and the sticks wouldn't be so good. Now, this willow lobster pot, it will deteriorate over a period of, say, you'd get three good years fishing out of them if you look after them. But if you were to lose it, it would deteriorate and would break up and it wouldn't be um, detrimental to any fishing. It wouldn't carry on fishing like the modern pots with the plastic and the netting. If you lose a pot, it still carries on fishing and it's detrimental to the, um, the crabs and the lobsters that get caught in there. So I'll talk you now down through it. Each family, they made them slightly different. My family, if you notice here, um, all the willows is woven the same way as the sun. My grandfather used to say the willow boy grows and faces the sun as the sun goes round and it is easier to turn the sticks the same way and I just took it from in on that. Like I say there's um, the Devon crab pot which is more like this one. I have a version of a Cornish pot here and this is made slightly different if you look at the neck. The neck is further down and that is for crawfish and now we don't get the crawfish up the English Channel they go up the Gulf Stream north coast of Cornwall north coast of Devon but that is a slightly larger neck because the crawfish has got large tentacles that go out feeling its way around and that gives it a better entrance but um, it's these are quite sufficient for lobsters and crabs so I like to make the old Cornish one occasionally just to keep me hand in. I started making them as a youngster, <clears throat> well I suppose I was 10 years old during the war and um, I was 10 before my wrists were strong enough to turn the willows and after I came out of the Marines um, a friend of mine, an elderly friend of mine, Jacko Curtis got me back into making them again and he was great for um, turning down pots but he would turn it down if you like the other way against the sun but there are several pictures of the Curtises in line with their lobster pots various ages now what I'd like to do now is to show you briefly as quick as I can how we go about making them this stand here has been in the family, I don't know, yonks, several years, donkey years. See my plastic modification there? Now first of all, the top here is drilled to take the rods as we call them, the main parts, and it's got a 5 inch neck which I'm on now, a 6 inch neck and an 8 inch neck. 8 inch for big crabs, 6 inch variable and the 5 inch mainly for lobsters because if a lobster goes in a pot you really don't want a crab going in after him in case they have a fight. Now I've put 12 rods in here and these rods I buy them in 7 foot lengths from the Somerset levels and <clears throat> making these smaller pots I can cut 2 foot off them off the base and they form the rubbing strakes 
at the bottom of the pot, all there round there is the rubbing strakes. So then there are five foot five foot rods going in. The twisters, these little chaps, that I buy them at three foot and they're nice and pliable and they're about the right length for the type of pots I do. So I've now completed or nearly completed, we'll just do another run around so that you can see, the neck of the pot and the twisters are just in over, 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 over. Now you can see I'm not moving around the pot, the pot is moving around me and that is one of my modifications. I've got a round base except that in this area it does hit the top. So we're now ready at the stage to turn them down. Now you want your willows, you want to make your pots as soon after they are cut as possible. You don't want the willows to dry out. Now what I'm going to do now is to bend these 12 rods down, of which you can see in the video. Bear with me a minute. I'm, I'm bruising the willow as it's going down. Right, we're in a position now where I've bent the 12 rods over and you, by looking at it, you can see the gaps, can't you? There, there's two bigger gaps. You couldn't possibly weave the twisters in or stop the lobsters going out. So we have to add another, in this smaller pot, we add another 12 rods. Now I've got the rods ready. So what I'm going to do now is to put one in alongside the ones that I've got there now. And I pick which side I'm going by the gaps. So we're going to put another 12 rods in. Right, now I'm going to bend these next 12 down. And hopefully you can see the thing starting to take shape. When the old boys were up in the net lofts making these during the winter, the tales you heard were unbelievable. And some of them men, you know, when I was growing up, were from the Great War. You know, like... Right, so now we've got 24 rods which is, enables us to start the twisters. And I've got a few rods here which are ready to fill in because, as you know, in a cir any circle that's coming out, you're going to have to add more to fill it in. So our next stage then is to start off the twisters. Now, to start with, I want to pick out four thin twisters. I'm going to put two together here. I don't know whether you want to come in a bit, Rod. Rob. One's going there. One's going underneath it. There's two there. And then its next pair is going here. You can imagine if I had to stop and sharpen all these as I'm doing it. So it's much better to do as much as you can or get some long lad to do it for you. I think there's only about four of us in the West Country that does this now. They're still used on small boats. 
but the bigger boats of course with their heavy winches and things like that they would pull them all to pieces. Right now we're going to kick off with the twisters I'm going to bring them back there and just pick I'll go under that one this one I'll go under that one kicking off with that one so I've gone under two there this one will come over and away the mixer where we go As the twisters get thin, so I will add another twister in. So I'm going to add now. So don't look at this, look at that. Because this can be all over the place, that's the bit I'm looking at. There is another twister which will go up behind that one and in front of that one. Push him well down, you're going to cut that bit off. So you get that, that joins that lot, thickens that lot up, over him, under him, and because I've added there, I've got to add there. If you can pick the thin ones out to start with as you're going around the first round, Again, because I've added one, got to add another. I clean up all these ends afterwards that stick through. Not that the lobsters would mind, but... Now what we're going to do is to gradually weave our way round three and a half turns then weave level the thing and I will show you to save time I will show you one that's been weaved down to that situation there we are so we're at that stage now so we'll leave this one and I'll show you how we start at least to do the, the bottoms. I've got a little bit of tidying up to do first. The first thing I do, because of these points here, which I put in the frame, I want to cut them off, because you can imagine putting your hand in to bait it, or to take a lobster out, you get what we call, you would bark your hand, as we used to call it. And they threw, you could always tell a lobster fisherman because he was all barked and festered here. That he'd have sea boils and everything round where he'd scrape his hands and that. So I'm cutting these off. Around the neck.
Yeah, that's them cut off. Now I'm going to tidy up the little pieces going around. And this is only for my thing. It's not for the... No benefit whatsoever to the lobsters or crabs would make no difference whatsoever. Just that uh, when my pots are up on the key, I don't want somebody coming along saying, God, he made a mess of that look. Which they probably would anyway. You use about 45 rods on a normal size crab and lobster pot. The bigger pots, whereas I put in an extra one on this particular pot, you would put one either side. So you would, whereas you started with 12, before you started weaving, you'd, you'd have 36. Here we are, we're ready now to start bottoming. Now the difference I've seen with some of the Cornish pots, which I don't particularly like myself, is that they will put their sticks across and cut them off in the middle, which I think is a weak point, but still, to each their own. Our, our rods go right across. Now what I should be doing now is to putting every other one across there. And when I put the neck every other one across, I miss two. So I'm going two there. Every other one this side into two there. Trying to keep them in the center if I can. Going down. Probably a bit of a job to get a photo on this. Once you start this, you can't stop. Not until you get it. The first three rounds in. Now you see where I went every other one, as I'm halfway around the pot now, it's going to go in every one there. Every one. This interweaving like this makes a very strong base. And if you're basically a pot is strong, then your pot is strong. This is where you don't want your wife to call you to do something. And if I worked it right, I've got one more stick to go. No, I haven't. Careful, I might have. No, I've got one extra stick in somewhere, that doesn't matter. Right, holding it as near to the centre underneath the mouth that you can, you want to get a couple of sticks woven round as soon as you can and then you can have a break. So, start to weave from the centre. Once you've got a couple of sticks around,
and you might have a chance to square it up for you. But once you get two or three sticks around, that's it. That's that's going to be the shape of the pot. This is where it plays up your hands a bit in the center. Now he's mine. Nobody's going to shift that now. There we are, and that's the start of it. We've now finished um, weaving in the cross members, as shall we say. So we're going to start now with these uprights, and we're going to weave them opposite. I've done a couple. There's one gone in there, one gone in there, one gone in there, one gone in there. So it's like broken into quarters now. And now we're just going to, at random, go around and pick another one. Now there's four here, I'll pick this one. And we weave around until we've used them all. It gets a little more difficult as you lose space, or as the space gets more confined. Not many more now. Like I say, I'll use some, and some I won't. I put, I'm going to start the rubbing straight now. The two foot pieces come up. The main thing is to pr protect this lower edge of this weave here. We work our way around. working. I just do a rough tie on the bottom, tie them in just temporary so that they sort of cure or grow into the shape, you know. Takes the strain off of it. And now here's the finished pot. And by putting the rubbish strake on, it's protected all this bottom row that goes down onto the rocks and therefore is protected against chafe. And you put the bait on a, a skewer or a skiver as it's called, or we call it. And that is skivered into the neck as such. And the crab has to go in or lobster in and up around to get it. What I'm going to do now is just tidy it up. The first thing I do, because of these points here, which I put in the frame, I want to cut them off because you can imagine putting your hand in to bait it or to take a lobster out you get what we call you would bark your hand as we used to call it and then through you could always tell a lobster fisherman because he was all 
barked and festered here, he'd have sea boils and everything, round right where he'd scrape his hands and that. So I'm cutting these off. Around the neck. Yeah, that's them cut off. Now I'm going to tidy up the little pieces going round. And this is only for my thing. It's not for the... No benefit whatsoever to the lobsters or crabs. would make no difference whatsoever. Just that uh, when my pots are up on the key, I don't want somebody coming along saying, God, he made a mess of that look. Which they probably would anyway. You use about forty five rods on a normal size crab and lobster pot. The bigger pots, whereas I put in an extra one on this particular pot, you would put one either side. So you would, whereas you started with 12, before you started weaving, you'd, you'd have 36. Here we are, we're ready now to start bottoming. Now the difference I've seen with some of the Cornish pots, which I don't particularly like myself, is that they will put their sticks across and cut them off in the middle, which I think is a weak point, but still, to each their own. Our, our rods go right across. Now what I should be doing now is to putting every other one across there. And when I put the neck every other one across, I miss two. So I'm going two there. Every other one this side into two there. Trying to keep them in the center if I can. Bring it down. Probably a bit of a job to get a photo on this. Once you start this, you can't stop. Not until you get it. The first three rounds in. Now you see where I went every other one as I'm halfway around the pot now it's going to go in every one there. Every one. This interweaving like this makes a very strong base and if you're basically a pot is strong then your pot is strong. This is where you don't want your wife to call you to do something. And if I've worked it right, I've got one more stick to go. Right, holding it as near to the centre underneath the mouth that you can you want to get a couple of sticks woven round as soon as you can and then you can have a break so start to weave 
from the centre. Once you've got a couple of sticks around, have a chance to square it up before, yeah. but once you get two or three sticks around that's it that's that's going to be the shape of the pot this is where it plays up your hands a bit in the center going to shift that now. There we are and that's the start of it. We've now finished um, weaving in the cross members as shall we say. So we're going to start now with these uprights and we're going to weave them opposite. I've done a couple. There's one gone in there one gone in there, one gone in there, one gone in there. So it's like broken into quarters now. And now we're just going to, at random, go around and pick another one. Now there's four here, I'll pick this one. And we weave around until we've used them all. say I'll use some and some I won't. I put, I'm going to start the rubbing straight now. The two foot pieces come up. The main thing is to pr protect this lower edge of this weave here. We work our way around. Working. Ends going on that one. I just do a rough tie on the bottom, tie them in just temporary so that they sort of cure or grow into the shape, you know. Takes the strain off of it. And now here's the finished pot. And by putting the rubbish strake on, it's protected all this bottom row that goes down onto the rocks and therefore is protected against chafe. And you put the bait on a a skewer or a skiver as it's called or we call it and that is skivered into the neck as such and the crab has to go in or lobster in and up around to get it. 